Kay Saavedra, and I'm a multidisciplinary artist based out of Southern Oregon. To be very general, my work records my lived experiences and is underscored with commentary on politics and current events. I'm unapologetic when I make my work. Unapologetically vulnerable, really. The work is marked by its scratchy textures, figures, often my own figure and often distorted, and by text appropriated from popular sources. I don't censor my feelings or my identities or my political views. I'm guerrilla in my approach, making videos, paintings, collages, sculptures, and doing performances often spur of the moment and with no budget. I aim to use materials that are widely accessible and make work that is unhindered by the fine art status quo. The pieces in the show are essentially a couple pages of my journal that communicate the tension and discomfort that seem to be the defining ethos of 2020. Hello, my name is Emily Fine, and I just recently graduated this past December from Southern Oregon University with a degree in art. My focus is in digital photography, and my subjects tend to be of nature. I think the inspiration behind a majority of my photos is the idea of taking parts of nature that people easily overlook and highlighting them in a way that makes it seem otherworldly and unique. I look to inspire others, hoping to reignite that spark of imagination and reverence for the natural world around us. The idea of making people question the reality of the photographs with what they're already seeing in nature is something that I have been striving to bring forward in my work. I try to immerse people in the spaces I've created with my pieces. I want them to really study a photo, look at it from different angles, get up close to see the intricate details I choose to highlight, or to ponder what the subject of the photo is supposed to be and why I chose to highlight it. I hope my work reminds people why they enjoy the outdoors and the nature that surrounds them. My name is Mohammed Zamani. I am a photographer currently living in Ashland, Oregon. I use Nikon digital cameras and iPhones to take my photos. I don't typically approach photography with a conscious philosophy or intention. Sometimes I am experimental with the camera or I'm looking to set a mood but it's the photos with minimal subjectivity that I tend to submit to gallery exhibitions. I'm reminded of something I once read that the mystic poet philosopher Novalis wrote. He felt that the life of an artist starts out in an introspective phase, where the work produced is immersed in self-expression, before then maturing into a second stage, where the artist's vision is directed outward, and they engage in more spontaneous and sober observations of the external world. The photos I like most are those that simply compel me to look and take in what is being seen. Every photo contains information. It's the photos resisting articulation that I find most satisfying. I'm not trying to mediate an experience for the audience. I'm not asking anyone to synthesize an interpretation or contemplate my technique or otherwise feel that there is some great idea I am hoping to represent. There is no overt symbolism or metaphor. I would say it's the stillness inherent in a single moment that mostly comes through. My name is Matthew Skelly. I recently graduated from Southern Oregon University in December of 2020. My drawings are done primarily using ink on paper. Line quality is probably the element that I paid the most attention to, as well as the overall balance between flatness and perceived depth. The contrast between simplicity and extreme detail is another crucial aspect to me. Within the drawings, there are small stories being told micro-narratives that feed and grow off of one another. These stories usually translate visually into a sort of condensed movement, where the beginning, middle, and ending acts of the narrative all happen simultaneously. Similarly, the setting is also compressed. The characters inhabit a disorienting and claustrophobic space, and they are forced into close proximity with each other. Because of this, even the smallest movement has a direct effect on those nearby. Tiny events can ripple out into catastrophic conclusions. Despite the chaos, though, each character has something that is important to them. Each of them has a goal, and I think that the tension between the pursuit of those goals and the oppressive environment is what's interesting to me. I'm Megan Ross, and I'm currently a senior in the BFA program at Southern Oregon University. 
I'm a multimedia artist, which means I work in a multitude of mediums ranging from painting, video, performance, and installation. My work tends to create or comment on a shared experience. I crave for my viewers to absorb thoughts or feelings for me and my work. I use very controlled color palettes within my paintings to direct my viewers' emotional readings in my desired direction. Juxtaposed from my typically pleasurable color palettes, my subjects revolve around unsettling imagery that touches on topics of mental turmoil or cyclical political events. My paintings are the baseline language of my body of work that is constantly cannibalizing itself into new forms. Um, my name is Chella Foster Flynn. I am a junior getting my BFA at Southern Oregon University. Um, I work in a variety of mediums, including more traditional 2D areas, as well as things like sculpture and relational aesthetics. Um, I'm broadly interested in ideas surrounding interacting with space and in the future, I want to use my work as a means to facilitate experiences, both individual and collective. I think that in an ideal world, art is a force of change, both like personally and individually and in a grander scheme of like social and political dynamics. Um, the pieces included in this show are all traditional oil paintings. Um, for me, when I'm working in 2D, I like to use oil paint because it feels like one of the most spatial and sculptural of the 2D mediums, despite still being on just, you know, restricted to an image plane, a 2D image plane. Um, for me, painting is a very personal and emotional process. It's a lot like writing, um, but it doesn't have like the restrictions of using language, which I really appreciate. In this body of work, I responded to current events and processed my own recent experiences, which have been, like many of ours, very intense over these past few months. Um, I think the intensity of the times we're living in is really magnified by social isolation because of COVID. We're less like prepared for first-person experiences with so much of what we experience being virtual. Um, and so then when we, at least I've found when I'm having intense first person experiences, it's so much more, it's so much more to carry because there isn't any kind of collective reaction. It's just the action and then you go your separate ways. Um, so these, these paintings are kind of me trying to, kind of trying to find that collective processing.